Hello everyone and welcome to this new session on surveying. This video is about 3D topographic survey using total station. In today's session I will not focus on the pre-installed functions in the total station that will enable you to uh, survey an area and get the 3D coordinates directly. Instead of that I'm going to explain the relations that you will need to calculate the 3D coordinates for your points of interest from first principles. So let's start. The equipment that you will need for this, of course total station and a prism. It might be a mini prism or a prism on a pole. That depends on your work and a tape measure to measure the height of the instrument and the height of the prism. I arranged this table to help us in performing this kind of survey and I'm going to go through all of these relations that you can see here later on. But for now, you will notice on the table that there are some kind of measured values. These are the measurements that we need to do using our total station and then we are going to do some calculations here to calculate the easting northing and the reduced level of each point of our interest. So let's take this example. For example, let's say that you have a primary control station here that you know its coordinates, easting northing and reduced level, and you have a secondary control station here that you know its coordinates easting and northing let's say that you have calculated these coordinates by applying the resection procedure that I have explained in a separate video and let's say that your aim is to survey an area to survey all of this area starting from the secondary contour station so that means you are going to set up your total station over the secondary contour station and then to survey the whole area from there because of that, we need first to calculate the reduced level of the secondary control station because it is unknown. So as a start, we are going first to calculate the reduced level of the secondary control station, I, and then once the reduced level is known, we are going to survey the whole area and to calculate easting, northing, and reduced level of all of the points of our interest in the area. So this is called HI, the height of the instrument above the occupied station. And also we have something called HT. This is the height of the prism. From the center line of the prism here, this is the sign here for this mini prism, to the ground. You will measure this using a tape measure and then this would be called the height of the prism as well. Of course, if you have a prism like this one here, the height would be completely different here. For example, this is a prism set up over a tripod, so the height would be more than one meter, for example. Whereas for the mini prism, the height might be in centimeters here, 13 centimeters, etc. Whatever the prism that you are using, you need to measure the height of the prism from the center line of the prism to the ground using a tape measure. Now let's say for my example that I have measured the height of the prism and the height of the instrument and I have these values. The height of the instrument above the occupied station is 1.3 meters and the height of the prism is 1.25 meters. Now I need to side the prism over the primary control station. So after you set up your total station over station I Site station X in this case, site the prism here, and then you need to look at the screen of your total station after you site the prism accurately. Look at the screen of your total station, and then you will need these two numbers the vertical angle value that you will see on the screen of your total station, and the slope distance. Okay, after you press this function for this total station, you will get the distance you will need these two numbers to calculate the vertical distance. By applying this relation now, this is the vertical distance VD, is the slope distance SD times cosine vertical angle. Let's say that 
the vertical distance was 25.555 meters and the vertical angle on the screen of your total station was 89 degrees 1 minutes and 23 seconds in this case the vertical distance is 0 0.436 meters so we will use this here in the relation when you calculate the vertical distance take it with its sign if it's positive take it positive here if it is negative take it as negative okay so now let's use all the numbers that we know in this relation so the reduced level of the sighted station is given here 55.369 equals to the reduced level of the occupied station this is our aim now we don't know it until now plus the height of the instrument which is 1.3 from here plus the vertical distance that we have calculated here minus the height of the prism in our case the height of the prism is 1.25 meters the only unknown here is the reduced level of the occupied station which is in our case the secondary control station so let's calculate that it would be 54 meters 0.883 so now we have calculated the reduced level of the secondary control station which is called here in this example station I once you've calculated the reduced level of station I you can from there survey your area and calculate easting northing and the reduced level of all of the sighted points as you would see now let's say that your aim is to calculate the 3d coordinates of a center line of a road these points here let's call them center line 1 center line 2 center line 3 etc and also the corners of the building let's call them building corner 1 building corner 2 for example building corner 3 etc and some other points in your area that represent the topography or the terrain in your area for example let's call them tp1 for terrain point 1 terrain point 2 3 4 etc all of these points here to simplify the procedure i will start all of my measurements from north so the first thing that i'm going to do i will set up my total station over i the secondary control station and then i will sight north and then i will set the horizontal angle to be zero on the screen of the total station for more information on how to sight north there is a separate video called whole circle bearing and sighting north in this video I explained in details how to sight north using two stations so after you sighted north and you set up the horizontal angle value on the screen of your total station to be zero all the horizontal angles that you will measure are whole circle bearings because the whole circle bearing in definition is an angle from north clockwise to the measured point measured line and now if I measure from north this angle I will look at the screen of the total station I will have a reading for the horizontal angle this reading that I will have represents the whole circle bearing for this case because I'm measuring my horizontal angle from north clockwise to the measured point you will use a prism or mini prism for example this is a mini prism for collecting the measurements needed for calculating the 3d data for the first point of the center line of the road for example this one so you will locate the uh, mini prism over here and then you will side the mini prism and then you will look at the screen of your total station to collect these four numbers horizontal angle vertical angle horizontal distance and vertical distance in some total stations you might have the vertical distance instead of the slope distance that would be okay as well and now you will go to the table and then to record these values on the table so here let's say that I have this value for the horizontal angle 10 degrees 89 degrees 0 minutes 0 seconds for the vertical angle 12.325 for the horizontal distance HD and the slope distance was 12 meters this is the center line of the road one the first point on the center line of the road and here in the remarks you need to write some notes for you about each measured point so that you will understand that these 
measurements related to this point and then you will move the prism to the next point here you will locate the prism over here and then you will side the prism look at the screen of the total station get these four numbers horizontal angle vertical angle horizontal distance and slope distance and write them on the table again so here for example I have these values for the horizontal angle vertical angle horizontal distance slope distance and this is center line too and so on every time you will move the prism to the point of your interest and then you will write down the values here center line 3 center line 4 until you complete all of them and then you can move to the building for example to side the first corner of the building building corner 1 let's call it and then you will record horizontal angle and vertical angle horizontal and slope distance and here the occupied station we are over I of course and then the next point building corner 2 building corner 3 etc until you complete all of your building and then you can move to the terrain points terrain point 1 let's say that these are the measurements on the screen of your total station terrain point 2 terrain point 3 etc to the end of your work so this is the process in fact it is very simple and straightforward every time you will move your prism over the point of your interest it might be a center line of a road a building corner or any point in your area and to record these four measurements because we will use these measurements to do the calculations so that we will get in the end the final 3d coordinates for our area let me remind you again about these relations that we are going to use here guys this is the relation for calculating the vertical distance we need the slope distance and the vertical angle from the table here here we have the slope distance here and we have the vertical angle here in this column so this is the vertical distance now the whole circle bearing the second column in the calculations is exactly the same value of the horizontal angle as long as you sighted north and then you have set this horizontal angle to be zero if you sighted north and then you set the horizontal angle to be zero any horizontal angle that you will measure from there would be the whole circle bearing value so if you follow this procedure the whole circle bearing value would be exactly the same value of the horizontal angle so all you need to do is these are the horizontal angle values in this column just transfer these values to here okay so all of these values here in this column would be transferred to this column here for the whole circle bearings and then for the change in easting and the change in northing delta E and delta N we will use these relations here the change in easting is the horizontal distance from the table this is the horizontal distance column times sign the whole circle bearing so this is the whole circle bearing in this column as you know the change in northing delta n is the horizontal distance times cosine the whole circle bearing simple relations once you've calculated delta e and delta n now you are ready to the final stage of your calculations which is calculating the final coordinates easting northing and reduce double of all of the points that you have measured for the center line of the road and for the building and for the topography all the measurements that you've done now you have reached the last stage of your calculations for our example let's say that the coordinates of the occupied station or the secondary control station are 100 meters for easting 300 meters for northing and 54.883 for reduced level so we have now the coordinates of the occupied station I based on these coordinates we are going to calculate the final easting northing and reduced levels by applying these relations so easting of station X X is any sighted point any sighted station so the easting of station X is the easting of station I the occupied station in our case it is 100 meters plus the change in easting between I and X the change in easting of course we have calculated this here 
this is the column for the change in ST. Northing of X is northing of I. In our example, northing of I is 300 plus the change in northing between I and X from this column here. This is the change in northing delta N. And finally, the reduced level of the sighted point X is the reduced level of the occupied station I, which is this value in our case, plus the height of the instrument above the occupied station. You have to measure this using tape measure. Plus or minus, it depends on the value, vertical distance, vertical distance from this column here, guys. We have calculated the vertical distances here. Okay, minus the height of the prism. And this should be measured using tape measure as well. Now let's clean everything and apply using these measurements that we have here in the table. So for the first two points, center line of the road 1 and 2, I've done the calculations and I have these results. You can do the calculations on your own and then double check the results. So this is the vertical distance. This is the whole circle bearing. It is exactly the same value of the horizontal distance here, 10 degrees in this case. And the change in easting using this relation, the change in northing using this relation, and then the final easting northing and reduced level using these relations here, you will have these results. And so on for the building and the terrain points that we have measured. Now you have all of these coordinates, you can use them for producing a plan for your area or for drawing control lines or for providing them to a software like AutoCAD or Civil 3D to create a surface of your area or to produce a 2D plan. So let me summarize now what you have learned in today's session. You learned how to calculate the reduced level of the secondary control station I from the primary control station X in this example. And then how to survey a whole area and calculate the 3D coordinates of the measured points from your secondary control station. I hope that you found this video useful and enjoyed it. Thank you very much and take care.